please don't forget drop a like on the stream subscribe to the youtube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified of any new content as and when we upload it to the channel come on you irons Hello and welcome to Falls From Iron, I am Gatesy, your host. Um, I haven't done one of these for a little while, just things have got in the way with life and, and whatever else, but uh, I just wanted to do this little one because there was a uh, piece that my attention was drawn to. Today, we go to Anfield, and uh, if Jared Bowen is involved today, he will surpass a record that Steve Potts holds of, which is 78 consecutive Premier League appearances. Um, Jared Bowen is level with that at present. Should Jared Bowen, Jared Bowen play today, he'll go beyond that. And it sort of like, I just sort of thought to myself, Steve Potts, um, great, great servant to the club. He um, signed as an apprentice in 1983 and he stayed at the club until 2002 in his playing career. He made his debut on New Year's Day 1985. He he is actually one of the boys of 86, although he only made one appearance in the league that season. But he is one of the boys of 86 as by virtue of that fact. Club captain for three years. Um, between 1992 and 1995, he was Hammer of the Year winner twice and runner-up twice. 506 appearances in all competitions only the one goal um and yeah um it went through the goalkeeper's legs but they all count and, it, and i just sort of thought you know all all this being the case such such length of service um consistency you know he was he was a right back he was um a def uh, central defender um is Steve Potts appreciated by West Ham fans at large? Um, I, I'm I'm not entirely sure. Um, when when an awful lot of people put together their all time elevens, you, you see the usual names um, from the older supporters. You'll see the Bob, Bobby Moore, Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters um, going forward, Brooking, Lampard Senior, Bonds. Um, and then sort of like the more recent supporters will probably go for players like Di Canio, Rio Ferdinand, Joe Cole, Michael Carrick, people like that, when they're composing their favourite eleven. And it just strikes me that, that Steve Potts very, very rarely gets a mention. And for me, I think that that's, that's quite, quite a shame because I, I think that when you look at his... Not not just his, um, you know, his his sort of like his service on the pitch, but in terms of the loyalty that he showed the club throughout his playing career, and also latterly, I mean, he's currently the assistant manager of the under twenty threes. He's been coaching at lower age grade teams within the club from sixteens to eighteens for a number of years now, and he's gradually progressed up the ladder of the coaching uh, department in in the club and and I just sort of think you know did did we appreciate Steve Potts do we even still appreciate Steve Potts as as a coach as a part of West Ham United did we appreciate him as a player did we appreciate him as a captain um I don't know you tell me that I'm I'm posing the question for me I do think that he's He's one of these players that kind of went under the radar a little bit. Steve Potts, very rarely when he played, I don't think he very often had an 8, 9, 10 out of 10 performance, but he very seldom had less than a 6. He was usually around about a 6, 7 or 10 type of player. He, his level of consistency was, was spot on just every week. You know, he'd always be one of the better players. He'd like to say, never, never anything spectacular, but he'd always do the job that was asked of him, whatever position he was deployed. As I say, he he was a right back for a lot of his time. Uh, we signed Tim Breaker in the um, late 80s, early 90s from Luton Town, who was also a right back. And he then found himself in competition with him for a period of time for that particular position. And then... He, he found himself at centre-back, um, primarily alongside Alvin Martin. 
and that you know he he was what I think he was five foot nine. So he was a bit of an anomaly for a for a centre half, you know, being that sort of stature. But he 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 commit he he commended he he fulfilled that role with with a plum. Like you know he was he was, and like I say, you you look between nineteen ninety two and nineteen ninety five, he was either the winner or the runner up in the Hammer of the Year award. So he he has that particular accolade I don't know too many other players that that can say over a four season period they were in the shake-up for that award every single season um absolutely fantastic and as I say he was also captain for about three years um in the early 90s so for me I think Steve Potts was a was a fantastic um ambassador for the club he was um a, a, a real, for me, I think he was a real role model. He he was a um, he was someone that I looked up to growing up, um, supporting West Ham. You know, he like I say, he was never um, gonna be a player that probably fans of other clubs looked at and said, "Oh, we we'd like you know we've got our eye on him. We'd like to to sort of snap him up and." pay a cup, good couple of million for him to bring him in to, to our team. He he didn't operate at that level, but as I say, he was always consistent. Six, seven out of ten performances. Never let the club down um, in, in terms of giving his all. Sometimes he might make a little slip up. One that, that sadly springs to mind is the, uh, the FA Cup quarterfinal in 90... Oh, what was it? 95, 94. Um, I think it was 94 when he, he, a little bit of a slip and in went Scott Oakes to complete his hat trick 3 2 win to Luton Town at Kenilworth Road. It's probably, that's probably one of the very few slip ups that I can actually actively off the top of my head remember him making. And as I say, he made 506 appearances for West Ham. So for me to be able to sit here and go, that's really the only mistake that I can actively remember. I'm sure there were more. Um, you know, no one goes 506 appearances and, and makes only one mistake in that time. But that's the only one that, if, if you ask me, can you can you think of a match where he really put a foot wrong? That's the only one I can straight away off the top of my head remember. Other than that, really, no. Um, super, super professional um, was always someone that, that just sort of kept his head down, got on with with um, business. You never heard him sort of coming out in the media and, and saying things that, that would get people's backs up or anything like that. A super, super professional. And in my opinion, I think I think he is someone that we did, did underappreciate um, and kind of took for granted, if you will, um, Certainly, when when I was watching West Ham in the sort of like the through the nineties and and into the early two thousands, I think, like I say, he he was always someone that we just took for granted was was gonna be there was was gonna do a job, um, and and possibly I don't think he didn't get the accolades that I think he he deserved if I'm being completely honest. So for me, I think yes, Steve Potts was underappreciated by most West Ham fans. I think that a lot of people now, I'm, I'm talking was underappreciated at the time. I think now, I mean, it's been about 20 years since he retired or, or left the club. He had one season at Dagenham and Redbridge after he left us before he did eventually retire. So he spent all but one season as a West Ham player. Um, but yeah, I, I think that possibly he's a player that now, about 20 years after he left the club, possibly now we look back and kind of realise how good Steve Potts was in terms of his service to the club, what he, he did for the club, not just on the pitch, but away from the pitch as well. Was Like I say, as a role model, as an ambassador for the sort of like the local community. Um, I think now we probably we probably sort of kind of have a little bit more of an appreciation for what he gave. But even then, I'm, I'm not totally sure that we, we fully 
um, give him the credit that he deserved. That's just my opinion on it. Um, but like I say, this was just something that, that I sort of thought off the top of the the, the the fact that Jared Bowen has has gone alongside him in the record of, of consecutive Premier League appearances and should he play today at Anfield, he goes ahead of him. But let me know your thoughts. Was Steve Potts, during his playing career, was he underappreciated at the time? Do you think now that maybe with 20 years that have gone past and, and we have had time to really fully digest the entirety of his career in the intervening years and, and football being the entity that it is now from what it was then, do you feel that he still he even now to this day gets the appreciation that someone with 506 appearances to his name, three years a club captain, two Hammer of the Year awards and two runners-up, um, one of the boys of 86. Um, do we do we appreciate him even now? Um, you've got the comment section below. Give me your memories of Steve Potts. Give me your thoughts on Steve Potts, the player, the ambassador for the club, the, the West Ham fan, wh whatever your memories are of Steve Potts. Um, you've got the comment section below. I'd be, I'd be delighted to hear from him because from you because as I say I think he's he's one of these players that doesn't get spoken about in in the glowing terms of some of the other players that he played alongside um, your Julian Dixes your Alvin Martins your Ludo McCloscos um, players that he played alongside and and shone alongside but we we remember an awful lot of these players when we're composing our our favourite. Hammers eleven, and I don't think that Steve Potts gets so much of a look in. I do think he kind of, he kind of went under the radar during his playing career, and he probably still does to a degree. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Comment section below. Thanks for listening. Only one thing left to say: Come on, you irons.